We're joined today by actors Thomas G. Waits. You might remember him from films like The Warriors and The Thing. And also uh, voice actor Tony Daniels. He's been in all sorts of things over the years. He was Gambit on the X-Men cartoon. He was also X the Owl and Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. And they have a band together. It's called the Thomas G. Waits Project. And they'll be playing live at Crypticon coming up this weekend, September 16th through the 18th. They'll be playing Friday night and then signing some autographs and taking some photos at the convention. Hey, guys, how you doing today? Dustin. Yeah, Tom, how you doing today? I'm beautiful. Tony Daniels is my partner, my mate, my uh, bandmate, and Cedric Allen Hills is on his way. Um, the three of us make up the band, the Thomas G. Waits yeah. Project. And um, this, weekend. You know, it's, it's, this is for the Crypticon, right? Uh, yep, coming up this weekend, yep. Yeah, Tommy's got me in there with him. I'm going to be signing and doing some fun stuff. You're coming, right? Yeah, I hope to be there. Um, I think maybe Sunday I might uh, be able to make it out. Where are you located, mate? We are in Mankato, so it's uh, about an hour south. Okay, yeah. I got buddies coming from Winnipeg, Manitoba down. Oh, really? Yeah, they're driving all the way down. No kidding. Well, it's not really that far, right? It's pretty far. Winnipeg? Is it? Is it far <laughs> from you guys? Um, I've not been to Winnipeg, but uh, it's got to be um, probably at least four four hour drive. I would I would think. Wow. Okay, well, these are really good friends. (laughs) (laughs) Well, first of all, as we mentioned, you're making your way to Minnesota this weekend here for uh, Crypticon, September 16th through the 18th. We're going to be right there in the Twin Cities. I'm going to have my Minnesota accent ready. Yeah, you could probably tell uh, where we're hailing from here by the accents, but uh, you guys got to be pretty excited to to be making your way over here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're looking forward to it. I, I. you know, was in Minneapolis once many years ago when I was a student at the University of Iowa Writers Workshop. Wow. I, uh, they conned me into doing a play for them, and um, it won some kind of award, you know, for Kyle. I don't know what the fuck. But anyway, I was playing the lead. I was playing uh, Elliot Ness. Ooh. It was called In the Shadow of the Terminal Tower, a very good play. And uh, I played the lead, and they won some kind of award for best. And it was done in Minneapolis, and that was the only time. And it was in the middle of winter. It was oh, bitter cold. I loved it. And yeah, uh, you guys are going to be playing uh, there as well, your band. Um, first of all, yeah. how did you guys uh, get together and, uh, and and form up? Oh, well, I'll, I can answer that one. Uh, Tony Daniels here. Um, Tom, Tom was doing a Warriors reunion, and I knew Terrence Micahs from the Warriors from doing radio interviews when I worked at radio and I went and my wife fell in love with uh, Tom and, and his wife's dog. And so we just started talking music, right. And uh, shooting videos and that was it. And then we formed and I, I just uh, started in one of Tom's new movies that he wrote and directed. And uh, it, uh, it just, you know, keeps going from there. And we, we feature a lot of the music in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tony is my producer and a uh, lead guitar player and everything player. And I write the songs and he produces them and we put them in this new picture that I wrote and directed called Target, which is a post pandemic sexual comedy. Right. And I'm not sure if you're old enough to see it, Dustin, because I can't see how old you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he writes the songs that make the whole world sing. <laughs> Although what's funny about that, Barry Manilow never wrote that song. He didn't? No. Who wrote it? Was a guy. <laughs> Some other guy. No. Or Jimmy Webb, maybe. Mm. Might have been Jimmy Webb. So we, we got together, I guess it was around uh, 2007. No, no. Oh, later. Two, later than that. 2012, 2013. Yeah. And uh, then he ended up moving into my building so we can practice and play and write all the time. But that was not, actually, that wasn't even on purpose. Uh, um we had to get out of our old building and uh, my wife met this uh, young lady and she goes, I got this place on the Upper East Side. I'm like, oh, where is it? She goes, I'll meet you there. And I go, wait a minute. I know this building. Oh, my friend Tom lives here. Boom. Done. Yeah. Now he's my upstairs neighbor and we can practice and record anytime we want. So yep. uh, we're getting wicked good. And great songs. Awesome. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, Crypticon has so many uh, events outside of just the you know, the convention itself where you guys will be there, you know, taking photos and signing autographs and then they mm-hmm. have the, the concerts and they have all the merchants and it, it's really a quite an event. Uh, I know they take over the, uh, the entire hotel with all sorts of stuff there. Oh, but you know, what's really funny. 
they're doing it at the Crown Plaza, but we're staying at the Best Western. That sucks. You're kidding. <laughs> oh, that's not true. You're full of shit. <laughs> we're staying at the Crown Plaza. We're, I think we are. Yeah. We talking better. Really. Well, we're using uh, false names because <laughs> we want people coming up to your room late at night, like Dustin, naked. It'd be horrible. Um. Yeah, no, we're looking forward to it. How long has Crypticon been going on? I believe this is the 16th year, so it's been on for quite a while. It's one of the oldest ones. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's good because it services a, a whole bunch of people in the, in the north, um, you know, uh, middle of the, of the country, and it's great. You know? Yeah, because we don't get up there much. You know, the Warriors and the Thing fans. We, we don't get out to them in that part of the country much. You know, we either do the West Coast or the South or, of course, the East Coast. Um, but we never get to go to the middle. You know, we've done Indianapolis and Chicago, Detroit, which isn't yeah. too far from you. Um, we've never done Detroit. Oh, I have. Yeah. Detroit's good. But I have family there, so it makes it easy. Well, I imagine uh, for you guys and doing conventions like this and, you know, seeing a lot of the same folks, uh, it's got to be kind of like a class reunion in a way to, to, to get to some of these conventions. Yeah, it is. It is. It's seeing, you know, all the guys that I knew 40 some years ago yeah. when we were kids. It's amazing how many actors Tommy does know. Tom knows a lot of actors. And it's, it's a great calling card for when I'm doing work, I'll meet somebody and they're going, oh, yeah, yeah. And I go, hey, do you know Thomas G. Waits? Oh yeah, we did a play together in New York. Well, well, I'm like, oh, yeah, in 1942. Yeah. <laughs> it was a play called The Tower. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the two of you have done so many different uh, kinds of roles and uh, voices and uh, different uh, films and shows over the years. Uh, it's got to be fun for you guys to to see the fans and, and kind of find out, you know, which role of yours had an impact on them. I guess you never know what what it's going to be when you put it out there. Yeah, it certainly has been a shock to me, I can tell you. I mean, I have people that come up to my table literally crying, you know, because maybe they were going through, this one guy said he was going through thyroid cancer, and he just kept watching um, the uh, uh, movie The Thing over and over again, and uh, that somehow got him through it, you know? Wow, I have people come to the table crying, and they go, I can't believe you look like that, and then they walk. (laughs) (laughs) Well, again, can you guys go over the uh, the details of uh, the music par- portion of uh, your appearance here so the listeners know uh, exactly uh, where to find you guys? Sure. So it's the Thomas G. Waits Project. We're on Spotify, but the stuff that's on Spotify isn't anywhere near as good as the stuff that's in the movie Target. And it's not nowhere near, nowhere near as good as the stuff we're playing now. So it's been a very exciting p- progression. You know, I'm sure every artist that's ever made any kind of music looks back at his earliest stuff and goes yikes and then he sees you know as he learns and gets better that the stuff we're doing now is much more sophisticated the harmonies are much more complicated the melodies the instrumentation everything is just much more um, complex and i think the stories of the songs the characters in the songs are real characters that are going to real life crises and uh you know that's a big part of my life is being i've been a performer all my life i'm 67 i started when i was 21 so you can do the math and now i found myself on stage with a guitar you know and um my friend tony backing me up and cedric Cedric is on his way but he's not going to be able to make it to minneapolis because we couldn't get him a ticket but uh, because he had some work he was doing already booked and so we didn't want to lose that but um, but yeah, the, the music is, uh, it, it's, it's not, you know, we don't knock other people's music, but this is music that you can really seek your mind, sink your mind into. It's not, it's not schlock. It's, it's the lyrics are just out of the, I mean, Tom is a brilliant writer. I, I am not kidding you. And that's, that's the thing. You know what we'll do while we're at the show, we can sit down for a few minutes and I think we can start putting, uh, all the new stuff from from the movie. I think we got clearance now. We can put it up on Spotify for people to listen to. The new stuff's amazing. I, um, I, I swear to us, and it's just, uh, you know, I'm excited about it. And I've played with a lot of big people, and I've recorded a lot of, a lot of big um, um, records. I've, I've done over 35 uh, records produced. And, but this stuff sings to me. It just makes me 
you know, thought provoking, makes me happy. The harmonies make me happy. Um, when we're playing, we just have a lot of fun. Don't yeah, we? we have a lot of fun and it's contagious. It's infectious how much fun we have. Yeah, it's more infectious than COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and I get into it because, you know, I'm an actor, so I act the songs. Well, you know the three I mean? of us are, actually. Yeah. It's yeah, really funny. Awesome. Uh, uh, Cedric's grandmother, you actually know. You ready? She played Arnold Schwarzenegger's double in Total Recall. You know, the lady that says, two weeks. Oh, That's sure. It. That's Cedric's <laughs> grandmother. So it, we, we're all actors, and Cedric has, has been on stage and acted. And he just found himself in music. As we we're talking about that yesterday. He found himself in music by accident. You know, yeah, he's a brilliant. Musician. And same with you. You really it was an accident, right? No, no. With me, what it was is, you know, I got out of Juilliard and I started working as a professional actor. And my first three or four plays, I had to sing a song, and I was like, "Listen, I really can't sing." And they're like, "Well, you have to, mate." You have to sing. So I, I took $25 of your hard-earned money and I bought an Epiphone guitar. And uh, if you were having a party and you wanted it, the room cleared so everybody would go home, you would ask me to play. <laughs> what was the first but song you were singing in, in the theater? Uh, I had to sing the Dutch National Anthem. In what? Yeah, in the Diary of Anne Frank. You know what, Dustin? I couldn't understand a fucking lyric. <laughs> awesome. So I figured, well, listen, to be a better actor, I'm going to have to become a musician. So then I, with my first big film, uh, you know, The Warriors, when I made Real Dough, I bought a Martin guitar and I started, you know, playing with people and studying a little bit and, you know, really listening and learning. And I, I've been at it for 40 some years now. I should be a lot better than I am. Wait, was, it, was there a Martin guitar in the movie? Yeah, there was a Martin guitar in the thing and I sold it to raise money for Target. For the movie? The guy paid me $10,000 for the guitar and I had to put it in the budget of the film. That's pretty wild, eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, it's awesome that you guys are able to to have the the music side uh, represented here with the show, and then of course uh, at the convention itself. I know you guys have done so many uh, different things, as I mentioned over your careers. Uh, can you tell, I guess, on set, you know, like on the thing or the Warriors, or you know, or maybe the X Men cartoon, some of these things you guys have done? Can you kind of tell when a project uh, might be something that you'll be talking about, you know, thirty or forty years later? Uh-huh. Well, I, I, I've never noticed. I, I mean, there are certain things like uh, I play X the Owl in Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. Just by virtue of it being a Fred Rogers thing, you knew it would be successful. But when you're in the studio or, or on camera or you don't really think about that, I think you're in the moment and you need to be, especially as an actor, because if you're not in the moment as an actor, you're not going to you're not going to perform well. It just doesn't work. So even even after you rap for the day sometimes i don't even think about it you know like i've done video games where they don't even tell you uh what video game it is you're just said here's your character and here's what you're doing and then you come out and then it ends up being you know red dead redemption 2 or or uh, far cry and then you go wow that thing's huge that's huge but they don't tell you my experience is really quite the opposite i i did um you know the warriors and i did a movie before that called on the yard with the great actor john hurt and um you know i never thought that that movie or the warriors was ever going to see the light of day to be honest with you i i never thought that and on the yard had lines around the block and great reviews from the new york times and you know they said i was going to be the next james dean and all this and you were going to die in a car accident <laughs> <laughs> and then the warriors was such a difficult job you know we were working five nights a week from six at night till six in the morning and after a month of that your body clock is so thrown everyone was so irritable by the fifth sixth seventh week and And then i got fired hot new york nights too right? yeah and it was the middle of like the hottest summer on record i think it was the summer of 78 and uh you know i certainly didn't think that movie was ever gonna in fact the reason I got fired was because, let's be frank, I was a pain in the ass and the director got rid of me. But 
my objections were not unwarranted to a certain extent. It was the beginning of the cascade of violence that Hollywood propagates uh, like paper towels. You know, I mean, it's just uh, each movie becomes like, I don't know what we're going to do next. People are going to have to start morphing themselves. I mean, the violence has become so obscenely, gratuitously familiar that I think it has seeped its way into the society of American consciousness. And it's part of the reason why we have so many mass shootings is that kids think it's like a video game or a movie. I'll just get a gun and I'll just shoot people. And just like in the movies, you know, I'll get away. And the Warriors was heading in that direction. And I was like really bothering the director a lot with questions about how violent it was, because that wasn't the movie that I thought we had agreed to make. But I did it in all the wrong ways. And I I did it uh, objectionably. I did it unethically. I did it um, by being difficult, childish, childish, foolish. And so I got fired, rightfully so, just justifiably so. Uh, luckily, I got to make a, an amends to Walter Hill, and he accepted it, which I'm grateful for. But yeah, the violence, I mean, we have violence in our movie Target, but it's so goddamn funny that, you know, it makes it, it sort makes of, light of it, it's yeah. a parody of violence. Um, but no, when you're, the thing, I did have a feeling, I thought because, you know, Kurt Russell was so great. And John Carpenter is such a great director. I thought, you know, this movie is going to be really, really good. And interestingly enough, as you know, it was a complete failure at the box office. And John lost a, a lot of commercial work as a result of it. And, and uh, you know, he was supposed to direct the original Firestarter. And he told me they fired his ass right out of there because of the reviews from uh, the thing. And, and then he was supposed to do a picture of Dino De Laurentiis and, he got fired from that, uh, you know, just from the bad reviews that the thing garnered. And then somebody was asking me this the other day at, at the convention last week um, in um, Cincinnati. They were saying it was with the advent of the Internet. The Internet is really what made the Warriors and the thing become cult movies because they developed. I mean, the Warriors was always popular. But it started riots, so they had to pull it from the shelves. But the thing got bad reviews and was not popular, and everyone thought it would just go away and become you know, lost in the dust. But because of the Internet, people started seeing it and really liking it and building up a cult following around it. And now it's finally gotten the recognition that I believe it deserves. If you look at that film, the cinematography is brilliant. Lighting, brilliant. Positively astonishing and then the directing you know he's not just a master of horror he's a master director he's a master storyteller yeah and um and i was lucky enough look there are a lot more successful actors than me believe me and a lot of actors that are more famous than me and have made more money than me but not very many actors have been in two cult films yeah and um i find myself very blessed and very fortunate in that regard Awesome. Yeah. And of course, a lot of fans uh, of those films and uh, both of you guys and your careers. And again, you'll be at Crypticon here in Minnesota coming up September 16th yep. through the 18th. And great opportunity for the fans to to meet you guys. And of course, uh, to see the uh, Thomas G. Waits, the project as well. And anything else you guys are, are working on or, or something else you want to mention before we let you go? Yeah, well, I have, um, you know, I have another movie that I want to do, a, a poetic comic horror film where the villain speaks only in verse <laughs> and uh i'm trying to get someone very um authentic and uh has name value to uh do the lead in it and it's um it's it's kind of like uh hannibal lecter meets the exorcist you know what i mean it's a really scary horror movie but it's also funny as hell so it speaks only in verse like 
When you say this, what do you mean? Are you fat or are you lean? Could you take us down that road? Oh, Thomas G. Waite, I can't wait for you to unload. <laughs> uh, yeah, only better. <laughs> you brat. I used to like him till the accident, Dustin. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that's what I'm trying to get off the ground is my next picture. So um, there's going to be a screening of Target in Los Angeles on October 21st at the Vimeal Arts Center on October 21st. It's a Friday. I don't know what time yet, but uh, as soon as I do, I'll, we'll put it out on the Internet so everybody knows about it if anybody's in L.A. And, uh, you know, we're um, we're getting ready to. Uh, kick that ball off and and uh, get into the game awesome guys uh, again th- thank you so much for your time i'm glad we were able to make this work and I- i'm looking forward to seeing you guys here coming up this weekend okay beautiful thanks a lot listening to the five count don't you ever have no doubt <laughs> beautiful all right, Tony. Talk to you. I mean, uh, Dustin, doesn't, talk yeah. to you soon. All right, mate. And again, that was Thomas G. Waits and Tony Daniels, members of the uh, Thomas G. Waits Project. They'll be at Crypticon coming up this weekend here in Minnesota, September 16th through the 18th.